Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, a growing number of increasingly young children are suffering from some form of mental health issue. On World Mental Health Day, the children's charity Place to Be says that almost three quarters of those at councils show signs of anxiety, while over half are depressed or withdrawn. In the latest of our No Go Britain series, our reporter is Jess Naisbutt, who hit crisis point while at primary school when she was just 10. She tells us how she fought her way back to health and explores the everyday worries that are getting children down. It was just like a chain of thoughts that made my body just become so unwell. It hurt for people to touch my skin. I couldn't eat and I couldn't walk. I ended up going to hospital. I don't know, it was just scary really because I didn't know what was wrong but I just knew that I would never felt right I'm 14 now but I was 10 years old and still at primary school when I hit crisis point walking to school I used to go dead slow because what if I get picked on what if None of my friends are there, whatever, I'm on my own all day. So all the thoughts used to just roll on and on in just like a minute. And I used to think of all the worst situations. If a teacher asked me a question, like my heart would go like dead fluttery and like my hands would start to sweat and it start to go bright red. And like, I just couldn't, I couldn't say anything. I was just like stuck, like freaking out. <laughs> Because you can't see what's really going on on the inside, it took a long time to be taken seriously. And eventually I became so poorly, I couldn't even leave the house. No one could touch me because that would hurt. I, I was in a wheelchair for a while and I, I couldn't eat. And like this all stemmed from anxiety. So like, even though it is in your head, well, not like it is in your mind and you can't see it. It does affect loads of other physical things. Mental health might be invisible, but it's no joke. There are lots of children just like me struggling with their worries. In fact, a charity that does counselling in primary schools say that more than half the kids referred to them are depressed and almost three quarters show signs of anxiety. Miss Bruce has been at Cubit Town Junior School for over 20 years and she's seen a big increase in children struggling with their mental health. I think we've noticed in the last um, five years mainly, but probably ten years before that, there's been a bit of a decline in children's um, mental health and well-being. Um, more so children um, falling into depression really, really early, um, anxiety about exams, about academic, about family ma um, matters. We've seen um, behaviour disruption disorders, um, more ADHD um, that is coming in. Um, but children that tend to just be more aware of what's happening in the world and, and very, very unhappy. Um, and they're coming into school with all these things um, behind them and having to just be children. Here the children are given diaries in which they can record their emotions so teachers can spot things early. Everyday worries are found in every classroom. When I'm worried, my heart pounds really fast and sometimes I stutter and my hands get sweaty. I just want it to get over it. I don't know how to really describe this, but you get butterflies in your stomach and you feel sick. You feel like you're going to faint and you don't know what's going to go on after that moment. So it's difficult to describe. Well, when I get worried, I just feel this, um, I, this, just beating in my head, pounding and saying, you can't do it, you can't do it. And I'm like, I, I think I can beat it. 
But talking about how you feel is always difficult. I normally talk to my mum or my hamster. Me talking to my stuffed animals, for instance. It's sort of embarrassing me saying this, but I, might, I speak to them because I know they wouldn't judge me or make me feel worse than I already was. In the public eye, and a lot of the work that's done, it's done in secondary schools. And I think they've always seen mental health issues as being a secondary school problem. But I think it's happening younger and younger and younger. And I think that is the issue. Miss Bruce isn't alone. 55% of head teachers report a large rise in pupils with anxiety and stress. This is my mum. She's a teacher too. Because of what happened to me, she knows how important it is that even in primary schools, children know how to manage their worries before they get out of control. Well, let's start our lesson with a practice. So let's start with finger breathing. OK, so coming to sit well, so feeling your feet on the floor and your bottom on the chair. And then when you're ready, bringing your attention now to the breath in the body and bringing your finger to the bottom of the thumb. And as you breathe in, just tracing your finger up the thumb. And as you breathe out, trace it down. Mum teaches a six-week mindfulness in schools curriculum to children from the age of seven. It teaches them about their brains, minds and how their thoughts work. And when you're ready, gently opening your eyes. Going back to what happened to me, Mum remembers how difficult it was to find the right help. I was just desperate for anything to help and to support us. And the, yeah, and there just was no help, so it was, it was, it was um, hard. Eventually, I went to hospital and received the right medical treatment, cognitive behavioural therapy and the support I needed. It was then about learning how to manage things going forward. If my anxiety, like, came, I, like, I can now just, like, feel my feet on the floor and, like, just breathe and feel my breath and feel like, right, I'm all right, there's nothing wrong. And, like, my worrying thoughts aren't facts, they're just, like, thoughts. <laughs> With the rise in the number of young people suffering with anxiety and evidence that the problem is affecting younger and younger children, we need to wake up and ensure services and support reach children before things get too bad. It's really nothing to be ashamed about. Like, I'm fine to tell anyone about it. I'm like quite proud of where I've come from to where I am now. Like, so I can show people like if they are going through things and stuff like that, it does get better. That there is light at the end of the tunnel. Well, joining me now is Jess, who you saw in that report with her mum, Emma, and Dr Fiona Pinar from the children's mental health charity Place to Be. So, Jess, first of all, when you realised something was happening, how difficult was it to express that and tell someone? Well, it was really scary because, like, I didn't know what was going on. I just knew that I just didn't feel right. And... It was hard not to just like focus on the physical things because like I had like horrid thoughts in my mind and it, I couldn't tell them from like the facts to the actual thoughts. So like now that I can, it's dead good. But like, yeah. <laughs> did it take a while for you to say to mum, I think something's wrong? Yeah, it did because I had all these physical like symptoms. So I we just focused on them because they're easier to focus on than the actual mind. I didn't know what was going on in my mind. I just knew that I wasn't right. So, Emma, when Jess came to you and, and said, I'm having these problems, how quickly did you realise this is serious? Well, we knew it was serious, not because Jessica didn't voice that she was having difficulties with thoughts, emotions. Um, and like Jessica said, the, the symptoms that presented were very physical. There were signs, but I didn't spot those signs, those early warning signs, until it got to such a point where you couldn't ignore it. Um, so when I would say to Jessica, we'll, we'll go out somewhere, then it, it was a re you know, that was basically like me telling Jessica she was going to come and face the saber-toothed tiger. So I didn't understand the mood swings, the reluctance, the tears, the real challenges just to leave the house. So 
So when you tried to get help from mental health services, what was that process like? Was it difficult? It was really difficult because um, she was very, very unwell, and as I said, physically, and that was all that was focused on. And no, the doctors initially, um, when she was admitted to hospital numerous times by GPs because she was so unwell, never once suggested that perhaps this was something, some mental health problem as well alongside it. So, Dr Pina, how have we ended up in this situation where so many young people, children, are now experiencing these mental health issues? I think it's a, it's a far more stressful world than we live in. Even five, ten years ago, um, there's a lot of pressure on children and young people around academics. Um, we have young children worrying about what they're going to be and what they're going to do when they grow up. I think it's a much faster-paced world, and, and they see their parents and their teachers very busy. And then, of course, there's, there's the online uh, environment as well, which can be 24-7 for, for young people. So what you're saying is you'd like to see some sort of early intervention so that it doesn't get as bad as it did for Jess, but it's spotted early. How would that be done? Well, I think it's a range of, of approaches, really. We'd like to see teachers having more training around recognising signs, whether that's a young person withdraws or, or, or is more aggressive or more boisterous, just that they can recognise those signs that there's a change happening. Is this about a cut in services? Is it a question of funding? Well, I think my organisation, Place to Be, we've, we've spoken out before and said we think government needs to invest more in training of teachers, more in mental health services uh, for children and young people, and that means statutory services, so the more um, specialised services, as well as early intervention. So having a professional in each school would be the best. And Jess, very quickly, just lastly, have you got any advice for any young people watching who might feel a bit like you do, or you did? Yeah, well, I would say to just, like, it's going to be okay, so just like talk to someone about it. Let all your emotions out and just say how you feel, because they can help and it will get better. Thank you so much for coming in, Jess, and your mum, Emma, and to Dr Fiona Pina. John. And if you're affected by any of the issues we've been discussing, do go to channel4.com forward slash support. I've been